So, I'm sure you're probably curious why a goblin is sitting here next to this guy's ass, smack dab in the middle of Goldshire of all places. Juiced up, pumpkins in my bags, guards on my tail, and no fucking idea what I'm gonna do next. Well, we're gonna have to go back a bit to explain how I ended up here. Uh, it may or may not involve High Mountain Salmon, Donald Trump, monopolizing skeleton puns, and an operation centered on pumpkins, gnomes, and flutes. But I assure you, it all ties back here. Ah, shit. I, yeah, I guess the guards are finally here for me. Oh, well. Hey, come on, bitch. Hey, come on, bitch. Yeah, do your worst. Do your worst. Fuck. Profit. Malicious intent. Loitering. These three things are what make a goblin a goblin. From the forests of folklore to the streets of Kazan, however, every green-faced fae has had a smidge of morality left within, a reluctance to embody the true goblin way. There is still so much in this world one can monetize so much profit to be made. An endless array of opportunity lies before thee who has the severe lacking in morality to take a hold of said opportunity. Now, perhaps I'm setting myself up for a Shane Dawson documentary here, as some of you may refer to this line of thinking as sociopathy. sociopathy. But is it really sociopathy if it's a fucking video game? Eat shit! No goblin embodies as much rascality as I. This is the journey of Flowerstain, the rather dapper goblin rogue whose sole purpose it is to cut through Azeroth, leaving behind a trail of chaos and ambiguity. You may try to interpret my tale, but you will never even come close to understanding the full meaning of it. So I'm sure you're probably sitting there in your stupid chair, watching this stupid video, with a few reasonable questions floating about in your head that probably go a bit like this. 1. Why does this guy sound so gay? 2. Why is he playing a goblin rogue? And 3. Will my medication ever stop working? Now, I can assure you 100% that I can answer at least one of those questions. I played a goblin rogue for a very simple and easy to grasp reason. Throughout my entire life, every single one of my friends, no matter where I live, no matter where in my life it has been, has called me either a goblin or a, f a word I'm not allowed to say on YouTube that starts with an F. Due to the constant bombardment of being named the Goblin Amongst Men, I had always made my characters in WoW Goblins, so why would I stop now? And also, look at this chart right here! Boom! Bam! Check it out, bitch! If we take out all the races that don't matter- Sorry, pandas, but literally, who fucking cares? We can see that Goblins are the least played race on the entirety of the Horde. What the fuck is this all about? The Goblins should reign supreme! Look at their stature of wealth, their pristine- Drip. Their aesthetic city- how the fuck are these fools Yo. the least sought after race in the entire game? This is fucking mutiny! If I alone can make any type of difference in this world, it'll be to raise the statistic of goblin supremacy, even if it's by a fraction of a decimal. I'm not sure if that's how it works. I failed special ed math. So now that we've established why I'm a skeeving little forest goblin, we come to part two of this discussion. Why in fuck's name am I playing a rogue? Is it for the absurd damage output, the objective uniqueness of the class amongst the others, the capability of going invisible? If I said it was for none of those options, I'd be lying, frankly, but the real reason doesn't lie amongst them. I wanted the class that would traumatize my victims, put them in therapy for years to come, and haunt them even in their sleep for the rest of their lives. Now, priests certainly fit the criteria, but I instead went with Rogue. Character customization went rather rapidly. I already knew exactly what I was going for and spent no time lingering. I sowed the seeds of my slap and goblin, snagged that perfect, tight-ass name, and finalized my character. Within a half of a zeptosecond, I was already met with a debilitating decision. I'm left with choosing either the new, fresh, poppin', right-out-the-oven, piping fresh, tutorial island from RuneScape. Mine 
minus the charm. For the four hour starting zone that I've already done 76 fucking times, the choice was already made. With no hesitation, I loaded it into the vast world upon a ship, in the midst of what I could only describe as being a storm. Not a storm unlike any other, but rather, a storm like every other one in the game. Like, have we actually ever been on a ship in the ocean when it wasn't fucking raining? I was contemplating not using any heirlooms while running this character due to the impression that I would have XP bonuses. But after a quick Google search, I learned that heirlooms no longer offer the same XP bonuses we had come to cherish so fondly. Good. I retracted that self-established rule and recollected the heirlooms from that stupid menu, faster than any Osu player who's at Swords Point in a heated circle clicking scenario. What the fuck? Calm down! I won't bore you too much with a heap of footage from Exile's Reach, due to it being exactly what you would expect from a RuneScape-esque tutorial island in WoW. Very entry-level quests, monotonous 2 ability combat, etc, etc. I will, however, bring the spotlight over the fizzle pop. Look at this magnificent bastard. Look at this specimen of peak performance, this fucking Chad. Kosher, why are you bringing up the city that you're making no sense? Shut the fuck up! To shave off the extensive history and details, I'll give you the quick version of the story. My friends and I have always had a fictional goblin character that we referenced, who was named Fizzle Pop. And they're like, hey, it's me, Todd Howard, it's me! It's Fizzle Pop! And so seeing an actual NPC named this, of all names that could have been picked, is rather fucking elating for me. This is already the perfect expansion. We can't go further than this. I don't even care what happens after this point. This is a damn good start and it's gonna be hard as hell to beat this. Like, it's gonna take a lot to make this expansion bad after seeing Fizzle Pop. Cannon. You're gonna have to like get rid of like drain ice slut mogs or something. Oh! As I ventured through the arguably most beautiful starting zone that Blizzard has ever put into the game, slowly working my way up from the barren shipwrecked shores up towards the misty ogre castle walled in by ghostly woods and ominous mountains, I was suddenly immersed. To be honest, not even an ogre riding in a car with a pwn license plate could be enough to pull me out of it. I was surprised to see that at the end of the questline you are forced into doing a dungeon with a few other players, all of which are forced into DPS specs. This was a rather welcome surprise, and a damn good idea from Blizzard. I'll surely get some good interactions in here, I thought. I'll definitely make some long-lasting friendships. I'll 100% grab myself a leveling buddy and start a whimsical adventure that'll be perfect for the- They're gone. Fuck. I suppose communicating with other people in an MMORPG MMO RPG player or role playing game, game in 2020 will be much harder than I expected. I climbed atop the weird creature that I still don't fully grasp the biology of and flew my way to a gunship, which in turn then took me to Orgrimmar. I walked into Orgrimmar, fucked up the quest, restarted it, and walked right back in once more. Since I was already aware of the city and where everything was, I had no reason to do the introduction quests. Starting out, I knew I needed some coinage to cover the important expenses in life, such as, you know, transmogger, buying useless items that I can link in chat and laugh at. And since I'm not a balding streamer, can <laughs> get it? That, that's an Asmongold joke. Comedy wow, gold. original! I hopped over to my bangin' main goblin, who's a blood elf, and hooked myself up with a few Gs. Now I was almost ready to set out, but lastly, I wanted a guild. With no hesitation, I sent out a very intuitive request into chat, only to be ignored and treated- What's that? A whisper in- In 2020? Hey, I feel you, man. Hey, my man. You got any leads? Nah, but I got a few G if you want some. Pipe a guild master or some. Yes, sir. I like that train of thinking. Meet in Valley of Strength Spun. I headed over to the bank where he told me to meet him, and surely enough, there he was. What type of king man will this lad be to me? Gracefully, he opened a trade window with me, and dropped in 500 gold. Wow, so rich! Like an idiot, I dropped in 1 gold, because I thought it'd be funny and it cancelled the trade. Aggravated, he opened the trade once more, and dropped in 500 gold again. Like the farthest goblin I was, I wanted to drop him a simple, that's it, but I didn't want to ruin my chances. I took the money, told him it was a mutually beneficial transaction, and ventured out to look for a guild once more. After much time spent in general chat- Oh my bad, XD wasn't paying attention. Yeah, yeah, XD and all that, so does anyone have a guild that needs an extra statistic? I'm willing to put the big bucks on the table here. I'm talking like 25 gold, maybe 30. We'll see where it goes. And speaking with the locals- Yo, Parks. Hey, yo. Get, get back here, you fucking- Wow. Well, yeah, just, just run away. Don't talk to people in a social video game or anything. It's not like it's- Part of the game. Oh wait, it, I almost forgot. It's not anymore. Anyways, I wasn't able to find a guild, not yet at least, and 
I searched the guild menu as well, and I found one that caught my attention, but who actually looks at this shit? Literally nobody. Regardless, I ventured forth and continued the struggle. Apparently, now in Shadowlands, alongside the level squish, you can pick any timeline to go level up in. With this new system, it's much easier to pick whatever spot and time you want to go in. Maybe I'm feeling a bit nostalgic to a simpler time, and I throw myself back into Pandaland, knock out a few levels, and switch it up a bit and head out to BFA's level- <laughs> Excitedly, I went with Legion for that sweet artifact weapon that will no doubt be replaced by a green I get two levels later. I started up the artifact quest and stumbled into Stormwind, where I fucked up and pulled a bunch of enemies, only to be saved by the random battleground I had queued up for and forgotten about like a half hour before. In the battleground, I let loose a goblin battle cry and prepared for the battle at hand, which ended rather quickly. And guess what? We actually won! And I did lots to benefit the team. I am a team player, yep, no doubt. I'll save you from the one hour of footage, but I'll just let you know that all I do in PvP is sap other players. I don't give a shit about winning, I just want to piss them off. I can't carry anymore. After I achieved the Kingslayers, I decided I should actually start playing, playing the game. game and progressing. Queuing up for dungeons never hurt anyone, but I didn't want to limit my leveling experience to only instances. I said I'd do a few, then head off to do some quests and maybe some more PvP. I want actual variety, not just sitting in the same dungeons doing the same fucking rotations over and over and over and over and over. Anyone want this high mountain salmon? Enter the high mountain salmon arc. The goblin merchant wandered from forest to forest, mountain to mountain, carrying with them the seemingly useless item. Not only will it make you pog champ in real life, it will serve you in ways you never once thought were possible. Gamer fish. Stop, someone please help me. Someone please fuck me. What started out as a gag I pulled inside a dungeon led me on the trail to monopolizing and drastically inflating the value of High Mountain Salmon on my server. So anyone want this High Mountain Salmon? It'll make you pog in real life. I'm pogging at the thought of it. Ho 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 I bet. I've been stuck in pog champ mode all day because it's in my bags. That kinda sounds like it could be unhealthy. That's why I'm trying to get rid of it. One more level. Really? Do nice. What a high mountain salmon to celebrate? Dog. I'd be honored. My man. When I realized the potential of selling this stupid useless fish, I bought out every single one of them off the auction house and started going around Orgrimmar trying to sell them. And boy, did it go well. I almost forgot to mention. There was a rogue walking around, and boy, it was fucking fantastic. I love seeing others who partake in mischievous acts against mankind. It just makes me feel so happy. Whoa, what in the blue hell was that? Bro, I have no clue. I was tabbed out. Yo, bro, stay safe out there, G. Fuck. Anyways, anyone want this high mountain? <laughs> You, Brad Stag, a fine high mountain tyrant such as yourself, would you like a high mountain salmon? Brad Stag, my man? My Rad man? My Rad Stag man? Ha ha, no thanks. Are you sure, my good sir? Fuck you, too, stupid ass cow. Yo, yo, my man. You look like someone in desperate need of a high mountain salmon. What do you say, my man? What type of name is Nono anyways? That that's every girl's nickname for you. Beautinaw, my man, my sir, my lad. High Mountain Salmon, are yes. you interested in such a transaction? A fine High Mountain Salmon for a fine gem such as yourself? Lol, sure. My man, enjoy your fish. Too easy. Now I will take this time to quickly refresh you. The one guild I wanted to join was called OK, and it seemed unattainable to join it, mostly because there was only two people in it, and it would be damn near impossible to find any of them. However, while selling my impressive stock of useless fish, I happened upon, get this, the guildmaster of OK, just standing around in the middle of Orgrimmar. 
I complimented the guild name to which he told me he was the only one in it. I asked if I could join him, and offered a high mountain salmon if he chose to accept my offer. And boom baby, I got the invite. I dropped that high mountain salmon into the trade window, and he handed over a handsome price. Too fucking easy. Not only did I buy out the entire stock of high mountain salmon, but I've also nearly quadrupled my profits. I've also joined the one guild I wanted to, and made a new friend. This is the life, boys. This is the life. And if you yourself want one, make sure to let me know. I can assure you 100% that all of my customers have been very happy with the results. No matter where you are in this world, I will make sure to give you this fish. I even gave one to my friend Reed in real life. Uh, th yep, that's a recent picture, and that's, yeah, that's, uh, High Mountain Salmon. Have a good day. I learned after a few hours that on the Chromie Time menu, if you select Cataclysm, you can get access to all the fun dungeons in the game. In other words, the classic dungeons. My personal, subjective, favorites. I quickly ran back to that little gnome bitch, threw myself into that wacky timeline, and set off for Tanaris. One of my favorite zones in the entire game. Why, why is Tanaris your favorite zone? This lonely desert with the same rolling sand textures for miles and outdated skybox? Well, if I said that those had nothing to do with it, I'd be lying. They certainly have a groovy-ass aesthetic to them, but the real reasoning lies here. Boom. The banging little settlement of Gadgetzan. This place is one of my all-time favorite locations in World of Warcraft. My people reign supreme here. No questions asked. From the pineapple wallpapers to the shirtless men crowding around a chef for some reason. The goblins aren't afraid to show their dominance here. Actually, Tanaris kinda sucks outside of Gadgetzan. Let's go to Thousand Needles instead. Now, I'm sure you're even more curious. So, you got bored and went to a more boring area? Is that it? No. No, fuck you if you think that. I went to Thousand Needles for one simple reason. This zone has the best quests in the entire game. Maybe that's personal preference, maybe there's bias there, but regardless, this little ship and this little gulf area has the single best quest experience I've ever gotten out of any video game. We'll get to exactly why that is in a moment, but first, let me sprinkle down some examples. You get to this banging vibe of a ship that looks like it came sailing straight out of the sea of liquid bop, right? And what's your first task when you get here? To start a fucking bar fight. Flowerstain stumbles into this wacky ass tavern, yoinks some nice ass drinks, vomits on a gnome because fuck short people, and then instantly decides to smash a bottle on the same midget's head, sparking a large scale conflict. As Flowerstain wanders out of the bar, she takes notice that perhaps her deeds were far too extreme. For now gnomes were falling dead, she ponders it for a moment before smiling wickedly. This is exactly what she wanted. Right after that shit is done with, you have to go underwater and find the remains of a sunken underwater race course, and come across a sunken outhouse with a dude in it, who tells you to kill pirates to find a pirate crowbar, so that you can open the outhouse and let him out. Why does it have to be a pirate crowbar? I have no clue. But Flowerstain happily kills the outlaws and yoinks the crowbar from them, to let out the man from the sunken wooden washroom, in exchange for goods that'll no doubt be sold or deleted, but never used. See what I mean? You see what I'm putting down now? All the quests here were no doubt written by someone who wrote scripts for late night adult swim shows, but if you still aren't convinced this zone has the best questing experience, then I ask you to turn your attention here. The gnome ice cream man in the middle of nowhere. When we fly to his ice cream boat, floating about aimlessly with no customers in sight, we learn that his crew members had mysteriously all fucking died, and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. And what does he want? He wants to get their bodies back. Why? <laughs> he also requests that we massacre the bugs underwater as well, and return to him with their bowels. Why? <laughs> I happily do all the tasks, kill a rare spawn, get nothing, and return to him. The psychopathic chipper gnome then tells me to freeze the pipes in a cave and kill a five-head beetle. It wouldn't be the first time and surely wouldn't be the last, and so I happily agree. Flowerstain has no struggle in swimming with the corpses of lowly gnomes and disgusting creatures, but granted the only thing on her mind were the repetitive thoughts of profit and money laundering after all. Once the big brain was dead and all the pipes were frozen, the hero valiantly returns to the gnome, to which he is delighted to hear the news. And would you look at that? Suddenly, he has so many more variants of ice cream. I'm glad he put his crew members in the bug's bowels to- What the fuck? Wait, what the fuck is this? Cream? Why, why is it cream? Why is- why is it in quotation marks? Did this fucking gnome come in my Sunday? I gave him his weight in gold tenfold and ran him dry of his frozen seminal delight. And then I was off once more to craft a new and rather ambitious idea. Bored of Thousand Needles, I went back to Tanaris. So anyways, as I killed pirates, birds, and 
other things, I also had myself queued into dungeons. And one by one, I slapped them by. And before I knew it, through the combined efforts of dungeons and questing, I had reached level 35. The game was becoming boring again, however. No interactions, no communication, no profits made of absolutely nothing. What was I, a frail and innocent goblin looking to make a buck or two supposed to do in such trying times? It was then I had a devious and rather humorous plan. <laughs> Oh man. I stocked up on the required material and set out for Orgrimmar once more. The vibe had changed. Skeletons danced with delight, candy was on everyone's breath, and pumpkins lit the streets in place of lanterns. My gut feeling told me it was finally Christmas, but the calendar said otherwise. It was Hallow's End, and for the spirit of such a lively occasion, I turned myself into a skeleton and went out to sell a handful of jokes that'll surely tickle your funny bone. Ah, <laughs> uh, get it? It's because I'm a skeleton. Mr. President, my man, I have an offer for you. Would you like to purchase a joke? Are you selling Joe Biden piece of joke for sure? Ah, good one, Mr. Dot President. I should be paying you, but my offer still stands. Sure, 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 Dot. You want the joke first and the business later? I like the way you think. All right, all right. Ahem. Where does the skeleton take their car? To the body shop. <laughs> So what do you say? The cat slapper. Any small loan, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And here's the keeping of the rock grade. A little heart stimulus package. You, are you interested in buying the joke? All right. Me? Yes, yes, you. A joke. A fine top shelf joke. So, call me. Alright. Name the price and I'll slap it down. Doesn't have to be much, but something I'm all skin and bones. It is a surprise. I do like me a good surprise. Alright, alright. Go to trust me. So, uh, why did the skeleton have such a good education? I am not sure. When he was homeschooled. <laughs> ah, that one is the a bear. Fox. May you have a glorious day. Too easy, ha 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 ha. Thimber, you? <gasps> yes, you. I have an offer for you. Are you interested in buying the joke? Oh, period. Capital. Oh. You heard me. You named your price and I slapped down a banger of a joke. So what do you say? I confused. Wait. How? It, it's not that deep. <laughs> you named your price and I say a banger of a joke. I can get free jokes off the internet though. My, you sound very fun. I bet you go to parties and people are like, dude, this guy is so much fun. Fun. You, Ziploc, my man. Yee yeah, yee. Yeah. I have an offer. Let's hear it. Would you like to purchase a joke? How much? You name your price. Alright, yeah, alright. Uh -huh. Why wouldn't the skeleton stand up to his point? Because he had no guts. <laughs> ah, that one always works. You have a good day now. You, Legolas, my man. Are you interested in buying the joke? Alright, name your price. Name. Better be good. Oh, it will be. You name the price. Me? Hmm? How is 100 gold? So, why did the skeleton church have no music? Because it had no organs. <laughs> Isabella. Would you like to buy a joke?
I would love to show every single clip that I gathered from selling jokes, but if I did that, then this video would be more unreasonably long than it already is. In total, I made about 4,000 gold selling skeleton jokes and bone puns. 4,000 whole smackers made off of absolutely nothing. In the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. No money at all. I'm still fucking poor out here! But I must remind you, I made it off of selling fucking jokes that I grabbed off the internet as a dead guy. Sammy would be so proud of me, dude. <laughs> Something I can tell you from my hours of selling jokes, however, is that a majority of people in the vast world of Warcraft seem to really hate fun, or anything interesting for that matter. Perhaps that's why they're playing this game, I thought. But then again, why would they make characters on RP servers if they don't want these types of scenarios? A vast majority of the sitcom background characters who declined my offers harshly we're playing this dumb new Volpera race, I noted. Now, I didn't play this game throughout Warlords of Draenor, Legion, or BFA, and to be frank, I, I don't really feel like I missed out on much, but I was a bit confused in terms of these new races. They're called allied races, apparently, and of course the Horde got the f Sonic fanfiction characters, because, like, look at these little fuckers. They just scream Horde, right? Stop, I'm not a furry. Okay, but, but really, I'm not trying to shit on anyone who plays as a Volpera, but I failed to see any coincidence in the fact that every single one of these fuckers that I met had a burning hatred for jokes and fun. Actually, y you know what? I just- I fucking hate Volperas. Yeah, holy shit, hey, you know what? What did the Alliance get? Instead of Volpera. Mmm, interesting. Hi, how oh, are you? Can I have you're mine? Genius. You're a tall one. Never mind, I love Volperas. Volperas are so fucking Anyways. Anyways. Orgrimmar streets were beginning to become lacking in opportunity once again. No one was responding to my requests anymore. No one was purchasing my jokes. It was almost as if word of the skeleton humor merchant had caught air, and they all vowed to not listen to any of my jokes, at the risk of... <gasps> Roleplay. Regardless, I had climbed to the tops of many people's ignore lists and was certainly put on a Blizzard watch list, but I did not relent. I still tried my hardest looking for a fresh target, someone who'd easily fall into my grasp. I needed the perfect victim to force humor onto, and you'd never believe my excitement when I found a new face. Fresh off the tutorial island, still probably locked in a trial account. Perfect. But why try and sell them anything? They have no money, they have no fucking gold. Fuck the gold, fuck the money. Well, not really. If they have it, I'll take it. But really, I'm just here to give this new player an experience that'll hook them onto this- How about you get the fuck out to my city, chump? What the f- I'm not gonna leave the city, dude. There's lots of people here who like my jokes, right guys? Don't you guys like my jokes? Cut the fuck up with your stupid- Eight, eight times this week, we tried to set the same goddamn- jokes, idiot. Fine. Fine. <laughs> You know what? Fuck Orgrimmar. Fuck you guys. Fuck the horde. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm fucking out of here, bitch. It wasn't like Flower staying to have an allegiance with anyone anyways. It only makes sense that she goes out on her own. Bitch. Eight times this week, you tried to send me the same goddamn joke. I don't want it. Want it. Want it. Want it. Fuck your skeleton jokes. Dweeb, 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 dweeb. Stop trying to tell me skeleton things, please, 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 or else the legs will shoot. Dude, fuck your skeleton buttons. Great, great, great. You're not funny. Stop selling me jokes, idiot, 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 idiot. This was the moment that Flower White became Stainerberg. Mr. White, we don't have money. All, all the dramatic shit aside, I, I just wanted a reason to go get the, uh, the achievement w with the, um, the, the pumpkins. Uh, yeah. Alongside the idea of departing the Horde capital due to the severe misconduct of an innocent goblin soul who only scammed a few people, a devious and oversized smile grappled its way to my face when I decided to smash a few stones with the same bird. I decided to test my luck with the Alliance. Maybe not to scam- <coughs> mm, sorry. Maybe not to sell them jokes and salmon, but- Rather to treat them to delightful pumpkin dance parties and, if things go swell, perhaps the selling of large amounts of Fogger elixir that I owned which would now become useless and perhaps if we get to know each other well enough, some gnomish seminal delight. Mmm, interesting. With her tiny fairy head held up as high as it could go and a rascal's goblin grin gripped to her green face. Flowerstain left the Horde capital with the intention of never returning. She was to live in the east now, recluse, until, of course, she needs more coin. Now, 
If you aren't already aware, during the Halloween event there is an achievement that can be earned for using the throwable pumpkin head on every race in the game, excluding allied races and pandas. When it came to the hordes races, as this was no brow off my sweat, I knocked each and every race out in a matter of seconds at the auction house a few hours before. However, getting the alliance races was the part I was surprisingly looking forward to. You see, there is an old potion in the game called pygmy oil, and if taken in large quantities, it will turn you into a gnome for a few minutes at a time. Now, I hate being short, but I decided to take one for the team here. You can't even tell me apart from a real gnome. Check it out. And so the plan seems simple enough, right? Just connect the dots. We stealth into Stormwind as a gnome, even though I'm still marked as a hostile target, and throw pumpkins on each of the enemy races. Well, my plan didn't end there. That's far too easy. You see, there is a toy that drops from Stratholm called the Piccolo of the Flaming Fire, which invokes the spirit of dance in those around you. And what better way to celebrate Halloween than to be a pumpkin bard? It all comes together. I would lay my past of selling jokes and fish as flowers stain the fabulous down behind me, and take up a new life as the gnomish pumpkin-headed bard. What's the worst that could happen? There is no life I'd rather choose than this one. Operation... Uh... Getting there was the easiest part of it all. In my goblin mech, I soared the skies above ramshackled plaguelands, traveled over the war-torn fields of ages long past, and pushed through the crystal wastelands of dwarven mountains, all for the satisfaction of seeing those emerald green woods, so warm and welcoming. However, the knowledge that I did not belong hung still over my head, and only grew with every step I took closer to the all-engulfing canopy's shadow. After dying a few times due to the fucking literal idiocy, I found myself in the top floor of Lion's Pride Inn. I said a soft prayer of thanks to my past self for not choosing to play on Moonguard, for if I did, this experience would have gone an entirely different direction, and waited for my resurrection sickness to disperse. And then, it was fucking showtime, baby! The first thing I did was fucking stupid, though. Shocker, I know. I literally walked right into the city and had no idea guards could see through stealth so well. I managed to chuck a pumpkin on someone's head though, so at least there's some progress made, but then I fucking died. I went back to the inn and waited for res sickness once again. And then, it was fucking showtime. Again. I flew back to Stormwind and found a few targets sitting atop the towers. I squeezed past the guards that were flying high above and hurled the gourds atop their craniums before perching myself atop the bank awaiting more victims. This was going swell. One by one, I collected them, tossing gourd after gourd, 420 no-scoping dweebs, and putting it into my pumpkin chucking trick shot video fucking Leroy Jenkins. The list was nearly complete at this point. Although, the last thing I needed was a worgen. Fuck, this one was gonna be rough. I needed an angsty furry that- And those are incredibly rare. It's gonna be absurdly hard. Found one. Boom! Done, bitch! Well, sorta. The achievement looked shiny and pretty and everything, but- it was time for me to invoke the spirit of dance in the lesser folk. In other words, I was going to play a song to the Alliance players. With a deep breath and a grimace second in size only to my ambition, I leapt from the rooftop of the bank, my hotkey ready, my intentions- I love this fucking video game so, so much. It's so good. After that, I, I did end up trying again, but it didn't exactly work as I planned. It soon dawned on me that this world was not meant to have a gnomish pumpkin bard who's actually not a gnome or a pumpkin or a bard at all. Very much like real life, it dawned on me that I was just a goblin. Flower stain fell deep into a severe lacking of a common everyday life quality, though this time it wasn't morals, but rather serotonin. Kicked out by not only the people whom she believed to be her faithful customers, but also denied the life of a pumpkin bard. What was a lowly goblin looking to make a friend or two? supposed to do in such trying times. So anyways, she laid down her weapons and looked to the south, in the jungles of Vietnam, also commonly referred to as Stranglethorn. She found herself lost and forlorn, hungry, desperate, and level 48. Two more times will the golden cocaine rain down upon her. Two more times will my dopamine gland expand and juice itself half to oblivion. Two more levels until I'm forced to sit and wait for the pre-patch event because there's no fucking way I'm doing that BFA shit again, dude. Our hermit, recluse and quiet, found herself wandering aimlessly beneath a canopy that proved to be worthless as an umbrella, despite its grandeur. The rain came fast and harsh, and I realized I needed cover. Happily, I found myself a small goblin settlement and worked up the courage to head in the eatery, a very spiffy place, clean and tidy, dare I say exceptional in the orderly department, though it soon dawned on me that I had but chump change left over, 
I was poorer than ever before. All my money wasted on... On Gnome... Come. I spent the last of my savings on Hamilton Morris's choice beverage, torn straight from the sacred frog, and drank until the goblin couldn't drink anymore. Two more levels. Two more levels. What was I to do for two more levels? And then it dawned on me. Why? It was there all along. The name. The name. Flower Stain. <laughs> I'll pick flowers whilst completely shit face on frog sweat. Sounds like a banging Wednesday night to me, baby. Let's fucking go. I crawl through the dangerous land, passing by the hostile river beasts, and coming to many near-death scenarios with the troll natives and raptors or tigers that wandered the jungle's floor. Though, I did not relent. I laid not my hands upon them, nor unsheathed my weapons to them, for Flower Stain was done with inflicting harm unto the weaker creatures of the world, for now, and was delighted, living until the end of her days, gathering herbs, and getting drunk. I was basically an Australian. <laughs> Although, the fantasy ended in due time. First 49, and then 50. Flower Stain bathed in the glorious light, and maybe for a moment, even smiled. Before getting fucking teleported back to Orgrimmar and completely ruining my entire roleplay scenario, you fresh ass style and shades. Pimpin' fucking swag. I had to carry a damn mop around with me from how hard I was dripping. Cuh. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Pimpin' fucking swag. Flower stains sat in the frigid peaks of winter spring. No home. No money. And addicted to an ever so decreasing stock of her amphibian secreted escapism. Though the winds were sharp and glacial, and the besetting white snow was beginning to shave down the remainder of her sanity, she knew there was not a place else in the world she would rather be. It may be so that with the lack of morality, there opens up a number of opportunities. But if joy is truly the price to pay for such an ordeal, Flower Stain was not having it. I don't know, is, is that deep? Maybe one day, the skeleton joke merchant will wander the streets again, or parade a worthless salmon about as if it were made of gold. But that day is not today. Now level 50, we look forward to Shadowlands. Flower Stain may come to enjoy the windy white rolling hills of winter spring, but the cold would never compete with that of Northrend, where our ambiguous hero would hail to next. For the ceiling of the world had been shattered, and that which goes beyond our understanding has leaked into our mortal world. Maybe they who have Flower Stain's allegiance will finally be written in dry ink and set in stone, or perhaps no one has this goblin's allegiance. It is far too hard to say for sure. Now level 50, we look forward to the future, but mostly to the perilous pre-patch party that awaits us on the other side of the horizon. And to whoever's watching this, I hope you come along with me on this journey. And, of course, you know, I have to say it. Thanks for, for watching. Alright, bye! I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool.